Welcome everybody to the Talk of the Top Show. My name is Alex and I'm your host. And our guest today is the CEO of the talent agency at YMU, which manages elite clients in sport, entertainment and business such as Anson Deck, Graham Norton and Frank Lampard. Please welcome Neil Rodford. Hi Neil, how are you? Hi Alex, pleased to meet you. Thank you for having me on. Yes, it's a, it's a pleasure. So on the YMU's website, it says that we exist to make things happen that otherwise would not. But what exactly does that mean and what things are you trying to make happen? Yeah, it's a good question. So we are fortunate to represent um, successful people in the public eye. You've talked about sport, music and entertainment. So we define ourselves as what we call a manager. So most people will refer to that as an agent. So we would classically do things like manage contracts in terms of negotiation, legal, seek commercial endorsements, um, so sort of standard stuff. But actually we pride ourselves in helping develop clients' careers. So coming up with creative ideas, whether that be on a digital platform um, or a new piece of content, a new script, a new TV series, uh, working with our musicians to work with producers, writers. So we sort of pride ourselves, I suppose, like most businesses on adding value um, to our clients by you know, seeking to be creative as well as commercial. So as the boss of YMU, what is your job to make these things happen? Yeah, so I, I would say my job simplistically is to manage the internal uh, talent. So we have about 350 colleagues between the UK, US and further afield. And I think my number one primary role is to try and listen to my colleagues and so that we deliver the service uh, that we can be proud of and that our clients expect. Allied to that, it's about looking forward, um, making sure that we have the finance and capital to allow us to expand and hire the very best people. Yeah, but my number one goal is to make sure we hire and attract the very best people uh, that they're available um, and that reflect our, our audiences, you know, the people that are out there demographically today. Um, yeah, make sure that they want to stay with us because that's that's the other challenge as well, not only attracting people, but making sure they want to stay in the business. So you've been a CEO for nearly 20 years at YMU. I think it's 20 years. And, and uh, so you've been working with talented people. So is talent the only key to success or can there be other any other keys? Uh, no, I think actually talent's a big part of it, obviously. But no, for me... Um, I would say there were two or three other things that resonate to me anyway, personally, and with the people that we're fortunate to represent. So talent's a key part of it. But I would say um, determination um, and sheer commitment, especially because everybody's careers go through up and down, personally and professionally. Uh, so there's a huge work ethic uh, and a resilience and a curiosity as well so being forward facing and keep keeping trying to evolve get better um you know both creatively and personally so yeah resilience is a big thing for the very elite people both in business and the areas that we're lucky to sort of operate in then there's a big part of you know being in love with what you do it's really hard to be brilliant at something that you're not passionate about in my experience yeah, so you are working with lots of high achievers like Anson Neck and Graham Norton and stuff. So how do they find you? Like, what do you contact them first or are they the ones that come to you? A uh, combination of both. We, we try and, you know, be curious as a business and seek out talent at a young age in the, you know, in television, in music and sport. And obviously there's always people coming through. And we're lucky enough to also be contacted because you know, our business is reasonably well established and known. So it's, it's a combination of the two. Um, yeah, and, and who we take on and represent is really important to us. So yeah, it's a combination of both really, in, inbound interest and us searching and seeking out very exceptional people. Yeah, so that leads to my next question, which is, so you, you represent like lots of high achievers in your agency. As you said, you have 350 colleagues. So why did these uh, colleagues choose you over like any, any other agency? Yeah, I think you'd have to ask them, but I think what some of the things is the people that we're fortunate enough to represent. So we're at the leading edge of most of the sectors that we operate. So by definition, that's exciting for people to come in and work at the very senior level is one. I hope and believe our culture and our philosophy allowed in people to join us and develop and grow their careers, but also their, you know, their personalities, their interests. 
Um, we work hard on things like flexible working, remote working, all of this pre-COVID. So we use, we, we talk about ways of working. Our culture is a big part of what we do. And it comes back to, you know, as I said, my par- primary role, which is to create an environment that exceptional people want to come in and work in and stay. So, yeah, we, we talk a lot about culture. Um, we don't get it right all the time, but and it's constantly changing. But that's the underlying sort of principle. I think... Obviously, there's the classic things that motivate people to join a business, money and benefits. But actually, what keeps people often, in my experience, is the environment, their ability to express, develop, influence what they do, um, and hopefully do it in a way that they enjoy the environment that they work in, both physically and you know mentally. Has there ever been a situation where there's like two agencies going for the same person? Yes, regularly. You have like a... Do you have like an auction um, to see which one who goes to where? Like you go, yes, I'll take you for this much, but no, 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 I'll take you for. So how do they like? How do you decide? How do they decide who comes to what? Yeah, I think like clients choose. I, I don't think price because the most of the uh, industries that we operate in, the prices are pretty un- industry standard. So what we charge things isn't really something that generally is to decide. In fact, if somebody's going to place their career advice then a lot of it's bounced around trust and confidence experience so yeah we put our credentials forward and they choose you know like the same way that you would if you walk down a high street and there's five restaurants what makes you go in one over the other um you know it's interesting isn't it a lot often it's a very personal choice pardon that would give you the best outcome yeah we well i suppose our reputation our experience our curiosity the research that we do some of the ideas that we would like to put forward. Uh, our international footprint is important, I think, increasingly. Our skill and expertise in digital is increasingly important, as you all know. You're a digitally native person, as we would describe it in the business. I'm ancient, I'm a dinosaur, so I'm trying to catch up, and the, the platforms are changing all the time. So yeah, it's about a breadth and depth of service, like, like it is in any, any service business, really. And finally, um, I have really enjoyed what I've been doing over the last few months. I mean, I've been speaking to amazing people who have inspired me and taught me things about myself, like confidence I have in front of camera and that I can follow my dreams. So what would you say that I need to do to make my show successful from here? Well, there's a lot of content out there, right? So there's a lot of people doing podcasts or interviews. So the differentiator in terms of is how what I would call how you market it. So there's two ways to market it. There's word of mouth, which takes time, but it's also about uh, working with Google, unfortunately, and some of the large platforms in terms of coming up with a marketing campaign. So it's getting it in front of people that may be interested, business, high profile people, younger people in your case. So yeah, what's your marketing plan, I would ask you, because great content is a bit like talent. It's There's lots of it out there, but how do you get it in front of people that otherwise wouldn't have heard of it. So what sh- I would ask you what your marketing plan is. Thank you, Neil. It's been a pleasure speaking to you. I've really enjoyed uh, this interview and I hope you have too. You've been great. Thanks for your time.